First of all, my reverence to Dr. Sarvapali Radha Krishna on each birth anniversary we are meeting to celebrate, to remember, to pay respect. I should also like to remember Sri Krishna Tanta Handikari, in whose name this university has been established, a big name in India, in the Northeast, in any case in Islam. I remember and pay my respect to his soul also. Professor Rajendra Prasad Das, all esteemed colleagues, who are having reverence from my side. I also pay my namaskaram to all of you and wish you all the best in the journey of your life as a teacher. I am sure all of you are teachers, maybe some are teaching, staff members also, who are equally important in the journey of any educational institute. I must apologize that I have not been able to come prepare with overhead projection and all that, because the time at my disposal was very short. So my apologies be accepted. So I shall try to use my notes and try to uh, be clear to you all as far as my capability goes. But the theme chosen is a really difficult one. Not difficult for me, but it's diff difficult for the whole system. So I say, is it uh, not very easy to speak, but I shall try to make some sense, hopefully I can, through my relationships. I was thinking that it would be more prudent at the moment uh, to speak on uh, NEP 2020, which is hot now, whose implementation is on, including the state of Assam. But anyway, this theme also gets up with NEP, so I shall try to touch upon uh, whenever a reference uh, may be cited while I am deliberating the theme assigned to me. Revered friends, a teacher's role goes on defining, redefining, re redefining. I am 76 years old. When I started my primary education, I saw people sitting on a floor over a sack. You know, the jute bags, teachers sitting on the other side, students sitting on that. Started then, teachers still were doing their job. It went to bench level, it went to bench desk level, then desk trip level, no fence, earthen floor to concrete floor, but the teachers have kept on doing their jobs. I may not be able to name some of those teachers who helped me in shaping my career over the time, and whom I will never forget. Coming on Dhoti Punjabi by bicycle, right, sometimes on foot, but an umbrella is a must. Like that I saw. But the wealth of knowledge that they had, and whatever little I got from them, I, I must pay my homage, my gratefulness, and my heartfelt thanks to all of them for the contribution. I still remember some of the refined aspects of grammar that I learned from one such Dhoti credit teacher, which I shall never forget. So teachers role like that, starting from jute bags, mat, through air conditions, rooms like go to IIT, Guwahati, everywhere it is air conditioned, go to some of the other institutions, like the one where I am now more organically associated, the Royal Global University, every bit of the place is air conditioned. 
But the basic role of a teacher remains the same, may be augmented and supported by the system. Friends, the kind words that have been spoken on me, I don't think I deserve all that. But whatever may be the truth, I am grateful to all those who contributed on me. Which makes me stand before you today with some amount of confidence. Because I love teaching, I love research, but I do not do now because my research is laboratory dependent, which I do not have, but I still advise people. I do education planning, which also is very close to my heart. I might have been somewhat crude to some of the colleagues at certain time because it is my temperament. You know, I cannot do natak. If something is there in me, it gets reflected. So I should be spared for that, but I never mean bad to anyone. In fact, wherever possible, I try to help people. Just the other day, I tell you a story, it's very interesting. There was a case of a student who had uh, mischieved in such a way to transfer from a university I do not know, came to join another university with a fraudulent mark sheet. And the fraud was done so carefully, unless you are very clever in understanding that thing, you will not be able to do that. It was just about a week ago. But then the state punishment should have been rusticate, which would be very easy, very simple for the doers. But I took the case, I thought to myself that let us see if we can still improve on that. Incidentally, she happened to be a female student, also from a community which deserves attention a little more than others. So I took a different stand and tried to not to do that but give another chance by some means. But some protocol has to be followed so that later on not work. So as a teacher, basically what I am, I look like that. Friends, as has been said, as all of you know, it's a very, very noble profession. But most unfortunate thing is this many of us as teachers are not doing justice. Let me open my heart. I'm not saying all. Had all done it, we wouldn't be here where we are. There are still some good people, but not so good in the profession are too many. But we have to get along, we have to take them along, we have to try to improve upon whether it is digitization or classical way of teaching and learning. So friends, keep your eye open, minds open, manage and handle the situation at it deserve at that particular point. We receive basket full of complaints every week. And then we have to keep patience, go through, see those, give judgment, give advice to the Honorable Governor, Chancellor, sometimes it goes to Chief Minister. But then, above all, before all that, we have to understand. Why I am mentioning that? Time is very, very valuable. Howsoever long may be your lifespan, maybe 100 years these days, with the advancement of sciences. But then 100 years are only 100 years. But the world is far older than that, far longer in age than that. And times are not bound by anybody's restriction. So therefore, let us utilize every moment very preciously so that there will be time when each one of us have to leave this path of living. At that moment in time, you must be asking yourself what I did, what I did not do, what I achieved, what I could not achieve, what I ought to have achieved, what I did not do, 
So all these things account you have to give to yourself. Don't do it for others. So therefore, don't spend your time in marching, trying to find fault. Rather you do work, your own work in a good way, become an exemplar. And this is how it should go. I have another very specific request to this university that you have to uh, contribute little more evidently and sustained manner in the, in the GER, right? In that ratio, you have to contribute more because you can do it more than anyone else having the regular uh, university systems or college systems because you have unlimited freedom. And the state, the region and the country look up to you. We are in a small position our GER of the state is something like say, maybe 7 to 19. Sorry, 17 to 19. Close to 18 this year. It varies. Country wise, it is 24 to 26. World wise, it is 55. And advanced country, it is 65 to 70. So you know where we stand. And the gross enrollment ratio is a measure of development of agriculture. The amount of electricity that we consume, that is yet another measure like that. GER is a measure. So we have to contribute. But a simultaneous question will come along that you are going on increasing your GER and at the same time positively contributing to unemployment. I think we should be careful. It is not that. While we are conscious about GDR, increment of GDR at stages, we should also try to look for the employment opportunity. Friends, if you look very critically the Indian scenario, we are not very much unemployed. What we are, we are underemployed. Watch my words. This is something I am telling. I am citing from some established economics of the world. Say India is not really unemployed in that sense so much, as much as it in underemployment. So therefore, in our teaching, in our daily lives as a teacher in the university system, whether it is digital, non-digital, classical, whatever it is, we have to keep ourselves alive from see that the GER also goes along with the job creation or making our people work ready and so that people are just not on the street. <coughs> For that, the national education policy, you see, this is the third education policy, if you re recollect. First was 64-66, right Kothari Commission, then one unnamed 86 around that, and the third one is now NEP 2020. And if you look at uh, each of the three policies, each policy was very good, I must tell you. But then what went wrong? Why people had to really beat the drums for NEP 2020? Well, NEP 2020 seems to have been taken very seriously. And what has been written in letter and spirit, starting from the Prime Minister of the country, to many of us, we are trying to follow for the employment. <coughs> Coming to that from the GER and employment uh, scenario, NEP has also given us some extra handle. That while we have the major, while we have honors, we have minor source. So that if I fail to fetch a job after I have cleared some degree, whether it is from KKHSU, or any other university or institution. I have an option, myself being a chemical scientist, that if I do not get a job in chemical sciences, I will, I will not go with uh, hunger because I can do something else, my minor will help me. So that has come much more prominent, but that again depends upon us, friends, how seriously we take it. Major gets major share, but minor also should get important share because minor is a way out for me 
to survive after my degree is obtained until I get a job in my magic. So please take this seriously. These are in our hands. Many where these are being talked, but I can share with you, please don't mistake me. These are not implemented very seriously. We have to do that. Now, coming to the digital era is yet another era, which has come in its uh, natural way. In fact, if you look at the digital era beginning, it will take back <coughs> more actively at least two and a half decades ago. When ICT, ICT, Information Communication Technology, being talked about, gaining momentum by and by, with Narendra Modi ji becoming Prime Minister, I am not trying to attach any one of you or myself to any party. All parties are respectful to us and let them enjoy their benefit better. But the analysis or the position, he is the one who had started taking digitization, 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 digital India. Well, we were hearing, understanding or not so much. So therefore, now there is a want of uh, digitization and that is where we are in. And that is where your topic comes handy. You say that, you know, the rethinking and repositioning the teachers in this digital. Friends, I have already mentioned at the beginning that this is not a very simple topic, at least for me. Well, when we talk about digitization, we have to ask ourselves our competence for understanding digitization, then implementing it, and also, remember we are teachers, we are not dictators of readers, I hope understand, coming to class and reading, so they are readers, or giving a dictation, they are dictators. Neither are we preachers at this moment. We are actually the manager. What are you to manage? This digital era for the best benefit of our students and ourselves. I say it before that, that in order to do justice to this, we have to see whether we are competent, whether we have the competencies. It is, it is very easy to talk in somebody else's uh, tone, but then understanding and doing by yourself. So first of all, we have to see Yes, ICT, its competencies, what are required, and how to go by. Now, I would like to bring you to a scenario called NETST. I am sure many of you know, particularly from education departments, people might be known. It's the National Education Technology Support for Teachers. Any N E S T L uh, T S and then another T. This is particularly for teachers. There's a project, a document is available which guides us to that. Of course, you have to use your own intellect, and that's why even I am a teacher. They have given several guiding points as to how to organize this by teachers in higher educational institution and maybe even in school education. So I would request you some of you at least to read it and have a discussion among yourselves for understanding. Not a formal seminar or so, but a group discussion. Someone, one or two of the colleagues will be reading it very thoroughly, presenting to us, we shall interact, try to understand and see what best can be done. There are some important uh, points that have been highlighted in this uh, uh, NETS, SNAP S, T. Uh, like how to make a kind of decision in teaching through digital uh, organs, how to articulate your curricula. Please remember what has been said in the NEP that curricula 
must be redesigned in such a way so that the rot learning, ROT, ROT, rot learning is removed. So what is there? You have to keep the essence. You have to keep the flesh, take the fat out. That's a very difficult task. You go to any university, almost all university will say we have done. But look critically, we have done injustice. I don't want to name, but I say this in public forum, and I mean for which I give my neck. Justice has not gone. So please see that that does not happen with KKHC. At least that you, as one of the universities which can change, please see that done very carefully. Then comes the uh, question of implementation uh, using different digital techniques. Uh, the basic technology competencies are also to be addressed. And the basic technology competencies have been divided into four parts, four or five parts. Uh, one is the productivity, other is uh, communication, next is uh, media, and then presentation, and in between comes research. Competencies, digital competencies, have been divided into these five parts. So what is said in productivity is that how you produce, but there is a catch. The Gadgets, the implements, the handles that you are using, your students know they are used better than you. Even school student, the moment he or she gets a minute free, straight away runs to the gadget, whether it is iPad or whatever, and starts. Playing. So much so, I have a granddaughter at home. Uh, before her food, whether it is dinner or breakfast or lunch, the gadget has to be put before that. Then she will come. She will start playing a meeting. You go on asking her 10 questions. She doesn't even hear. See the concentration, the full concentration they give that. And our students are no less apt in this. Now we are, we are going to tell them that look, we are going to the digital era. They will have the last class. They will say that you know much more than you. And it is fact. The things are progressing so fast. And they being young, right? They are the first learners, they pick up. So what? So there is a danger for us. What are you going to do in the classroom? You decide, and if you have announced, which you are supposed to do, uh, principally as a good teacher, we are supposed to announce what I'm going to teach tomorrow or the day after. Okay? Thinking that they will come prepared so that they can listen and we can have effective discussion. But they are ready with all their answers to the gadgets. You then start wondering what I am to say. Is there something new or is it a boring time? Also, the digitization has some other limitations. Before that, as an old timer, you, if you ask me, I would still say, that I cannot see any substitute to face-to-face. -face. Maybe because I have no uh, qualm about it. I am old timer and I am proud of being an old man, but my ideas may be very old, but I still feel, and when I say that, I am addressing the young people like here, uh, uh, sitting in front of me, I understand what I am speaking. Nothing can be substituted. But then, there is a dictum that you have to have to go for digital era, starting from Prime Minister to any other uh, governors, governors, not governor of the state, who governs, go for digitization and where to go. <clears throat> but then, cut a compromise. You go to the class, lecture on a topic, but the people whom we were addressing, they seem to have already known these things or they have in their iPad or in their laptop priorities. Then what justice are you going to do? How are you going to make your lecture interesting? That's why it is said 
that you have to be far more smarter. You have to go through generally those apps that your students are using, are used to use, and see what is going on. Then you try to find out that what I should like to give in the pedagogy and digest mentally, that this is something these fellows must not have understood. And there will be things. So therefore, digital era or even otherwise, present day scenario tells us that we have to be extremely hardworking, very, very up to date, read things, understand not for reading, for reading says, like a Gopsock type, storybook type, no. Read very seriously, try to think out of it, which you think these guys must not have understood. Let them read whatever they might have read. And your time is supposed to be spent when you are under the digital era and addressing those students. Another danger that you are also uh, entertained with is that uh, you are a speaker, you are speaking from one hand, your learner, maybe in the classroom, <coughs> many, many beyond it. You do not know that whether they are really mindful or you are giving your lecture and they are, they are doing their job of going through some news, some movies, some, some stories, some, some cartoons, whatever, like that. So that also you have to keep in mind in the digital era. But I'm not saying that you have to shun the digital uh, activities. So therefore, the divisions are like that. You do in the order productivity. You, you make some production of your material after doing this thorough research. And uh, then you analyze, and then you put in some form. Analyze to see what to be taken, what not to be taken, what is authoritative, what is uh, mistaken, right, whether wrongly written or not, that judgment you have to make. Their judgment you can make better than the students. And there where your role becomes important, your presence becomes important. You have to do research using different research tools to come to a, a conclusion that what you are producing uh, is worth, is, uh, is worth for the student, they might not be able to catch out of their own uh, hurriedly reading and going through different apps. Friends, we have to be very, very careful about the tools that we are going to use. And uh, in my writing, I have noted down certain tools, which all of you know. We start with email, instead messaging, uh, mobile colleagues, then add to them the blogs, Skype, right, and uh, uh, chats, audio, video, uh, lecturing, right, and make your tools comprehensive, because these are the tools, these students are also, students or even other children uh, of younger age, they make use, so you have to have your access. Then, go for something that is called media. Now the media, you have to be a little careful because please remember, when you are addressing the children, you are not addressing always the normal children. There may be some physically disabled child or children whom you cannot also left behind, leave behind in the process of it. So therefore, your media may have to take care of their needs as well. Be careful. Normal people will go, no problem. Capturing images, audio, video, these are all known to you people. Then go for multimedia educational experiences. You know, very often uh, in the interviews, I also see uh, we recruit professors, assistant professors, associate professor. We ask that do you know multimedia? But then, it seems all of us have heard, or many of us have heard, but many of us, or some of us at least, have not understood. In fact, what does 
really multimedia means. I don't give the literal uh, meaning saying a multiple type of media. That any, any fool will understand. But in our scenario, I think I could read and understand. I hope my understanding is not wrong. Should you find it wrong, correct me. So you go from a big smart board to iPad and cover all through whatever it comes. And to me, that seems to be something that we call multimedia. So see that the presentation has its own style. You can use uh, videos, uh, podcasts. All these things are known to you people. I have just jotted down for my benefit. Then, yes, smart work to iPad. Ultimately, then you come the basic effects of digitization or creating a digital environment in teaching and learning. What it is? What really do you, do you understand? Please think for a moment and I will be very happy if any one of you can give me a hint of the answer. Otherwise, of course, I am obliged to give the answer. The question is that basic effects of digitization creating an environment for teaching and learning process. How do we explain? What is really with, with, a, with, a, with an understandable explanation? And that will bring forth all that you have been talking about, whatever may be your subject. It is not necessarily education is the subject uh, of consideration. Anywhere, any subject, you are supposed to define L O C O C O. You are from uh, that institute, no? Social Science Institute. Me? Huh? Yes. Uh, yes. I was there in, in their board. Kallan? No. Kallan has left to Kallan University. Oh, your name? Joyjit. Oh, Joyjit. You are very young, but now he's become slightly old. <laughs> <issue. laughs> I saw him. I was in their board many, many years. Okay. How are you otherwise? Fine. Good. Now, uh, so you should be able to give me the answer. It says the basic effects of digitization and creating an environment conducive to teaching and learning. What to clarify to me as your student? Simple language. Your name. It's your turn. I'm not pulling your name. I'm here to Okay. Uh, let us say uh, you take a science subject or engineering subject and little softer, not in literal sense, say education, uh, philosophy, whatever. So what you expect from a student as the effect of positive effect and impacting effect of digitization is that you have clarified something to me, to my colleagues, to my peers, and you would now like to find the hello in me, learning outcome. Hello, CO, PO, learning outcome, course outcome, program outcome. So it starts with hello. How do you do that? Well, if you ask me, I'll say that look, I have taught something in theory, tried to do the best justice that my capacity permitted. But now I want to find it where it is understood. So what I have to do? I have to design a simple experiment for him to perform. And I will not tell that what he has to do. I will give all the ingredients and I have the knowledge and I will only say apply your arrow and do the experiment. If he or she has been able to do that, then you got your arrow. Otherwise, you might have given lectures, which has gone through one year, came out. Hearing and listening, Jaydeep, you remember the difference. Hearing, listening, but that is the difference. So if you can, now, but experiment should not be very complex, because you are just testing, testing the idea. It's a simple experiment. If you find it in its own way, based upon whatever I have taught, the basis is yellow. If he has got some yellow, he should be able to do that. 
say come to a software example. You have course in education in your institution. So you will be getting a beard also. I think they are going to clear that <coughs> four years integrated beard uh, any time now. Uh, you have given me all the skill that a teacher should have. And you have given all the methods, theory, semi-experiment, deductive, no? uh, dictating, all that. Now you have to prove in me whether I have got the allow that you feel that I should have before you give certificate. How do you do? You ask me to go to a class and give a demo. And if you find that based on my lectures, the LO that is expected to be learned by them, right, has been learned because he has demonstrated it. If you cannot do, I'm not uh, referring to practice class. Practice teaching is a different part. It's a practical aspect of getting this LO. Having done all that, if you find that I have been able to do it to your satisfaction, then that is your learning outcome. You have taught me something and I have learned and the outcome is this, I have understood and I could demonstrate. So you see friends, it is amply, clearly written in NEP and any other documents also that when we are now devising the curricula, implementing, we have to define the ELO. Similarly, when we finish a course, then we have to give the CEO out of this whole course what is the outcome that we have got that we must test. Don't leave it like that. And after a program, say four years BA with honors and research, you have to then see PO, this program outcome, whether it is going to it. And all your digital media, etc., digital equipment, digital tools have been utilized. But ultimately, you have to see that whether the achievement has been made. So uh, this is how we go. And I am sure you talk to many teachers. I am not understanding teachers. I started with my reverence. My father was a teacher. My grandfather was a teacher. <clears throat> uh, my daughter is a teacher. So uh, we are generations in teaching. But unfortunately, many teachers do not know what is really the teaching, what is supposed to be taught. Don't go on teaching so many things, books after book, chapter after book. Teach something, and that handle is given by NEP, said that the Lord brought learning, so take you with, take the essence, teach properly, and also, whether it is digital or non-digital, my request to all teachers here and anywhere else, that the time period that is allotted to you and me for uh, 11 to 12.30, is that I mean? I will be finishing before that. Please stop me whenever I have to. It's a bad habit of a teacher. Getting a platform goes on teaching and preaching. So I don't want to do that. But I have certain slated thing which I have to uh, transact with you. Uh, where I was? Which point I was? The essence of teaching. L O C O P O, all these things. But then, friends, as a teacher, I have to understand what is the LO of this learning. Otherwise, I cannot uh, prove in Similarly, after a course, what is the CO expected out of that? And that needs a lot of involvement. Where is the fault of time for you to write a uh, letter against somebody, blaming somebody as writing spurious record? Your university is quite known for that. You write a letter whose name seems to be known, but we find that that person is not here whether he exists somewhere in the earth, God knows. Don't waste your time in that. And ultimately it is no effort. Only thing that you <clears throat> have troubled. And when it comes from governor to me, I take it ten times seriously. I have to see that. Then I found it's hopeless. It's baseless. I may not like you. So I just put in something thinking this kuch hoga to hoga nahi hoga. Kam se kaman to dehi diya. Often then not you go on getting, not from your university, some other university. The other day, I'll give you a story because be careful about all that. Don't waste valuable time. Uh, 
there was a deputy registrar selection, which may also happen in your place, it might have happened. In, I can name the university, there's nothing to have, Divigal University, a, a good university with Meruna. That is the only university having Meruna, you know that. It's a very prestigious. And today is very important day because 230 crore is going to be distributed, not distributed in a sense, allotted today by name to different institutions, higher educational institutions. It's being held in Dibrugal by now, it must be halfway through. But I would be very happy to see your name also. You did not claim under uh, PM Usha? No, we have applied. Uh, so you must follow it up. There's a lot of money that you must get. I didn't see your name yesterday. <clears throat> anyway, uh, some others have been getting. Uh, what are you was thinking? Dibrugal University. Dibrugal University. Please don't take it further to this and just to justify that it is not a hypothetical study. As you expect, there are a demand of jobs. So there are there were five, seven, ten candidates so or maybe twenty whatever shortlisted and uh, the shortlisted candidate four or five were called. And uh, one candidate who appeared but he was not selected. Somebody else was selected. And by the time the result is declared, governor gets a complaint and allegation against the university registrar that so and so has been selected. Please see and stop it in the executive council. We took it seriously. We found out. Uh, I normally know people. I directly asked. I didn't do it for governor's order and all that. I called uh, the registrar. That so on. And I said that this candidate have you selected, please tell me. I'll be very happy to know. He was scratching his head, then said no. Then I said to find out whether that candidate was there, was he called, appeared for the uh, interview. Then he took some 10 15 minutes, came back to me, said yes, sir, yes, he was called, uh, but he was not selected. Whereas the allegation gives 10 points against the university, particularly against the register, that uh, he has done this, he has done that, but nothing was done in this. See, unnecessary wastage of our time and energy. So how we are perceiving the situation, disturbing, there is some ghost thinking, maybe some personal library or whatever it is, but such information should not be given and taken valuable time of others. Right? So let us all be very, very careful. This example I just cited, please don't take events hold against Timberbury University, it can happen against any university, any institution, any point in time. So let us be careful. Um, now, the, uh, the whole thing is that uh, all this creativity leading to lifelong learning and all that, then comes the effects of digitalization. I think that by and large, which is clear, we should be able to create good examples, transform the society, have good material, whether it is uh, my production of my notebooks will be available in the digital platform, my student's thesis, my student's thesis assessment report, my student's PhD thesis, any good article, research article I have written or I have gathered, all these should be made available. These are the benefits of the digital era and we should take benefit of all this. Ultimately, what has touched me out of all these points after I get, that I become a lifelong learner. Why? Because every other day, something or the other will not come. So where is the end of my learning? I have learned something by last uh, weekend, Generally, weekend is the time for us to learn all these big, big documents and reports. Oh, by the way, there is a good article by our uh, governor, uh, today's uh, Assam yes. Tribune, yes. second half of the yes. editorial tweet, where he has connected Radhakrishnanji's birthday with NEP and all that. So it was uh, a good article appeared to me, factual. Um, this will also remind you that uh, when Sarada Krishnan became the first uh, president, 
second vice president, what is the time that he was there in Oxford, those who are given in the bracket, you just look at it. Those are good reminders for us. These are good examples. So this is how it goes. Concepts get cleared, but only thing that take with a pinch of salt that many a time in distance education, distance learning, we do not know what is going on the other side. So some research has to be done as to how to monitor that also. Otherwise, your whole effort is fruitless. As I say, you are teaching with all seriousness, but then I am spending my time in seeing the iPod or iPad or whatever. So has the message gone? So some mechanism, some new research has to be. Another thing that we should need a screening mechanism of all these multimedia uh, to help us that the information the wealth of information that are coming every day, every alternate day. Uh, are they authentic? How many are? Are they trustworthy? Whether trustworthy or not? So some mechanism has to be, uh, I think, put in place. So that because as a human being, any individual, practically it is impossible to be up to date with your digital media in the digital era. Howsoever big claims you and I may make. Because every other day, some new app is coming. The other apps are giving information. Why do you stand? You get mad. So there has to be some mechanism. I am sure it is going to come soon. Uh, to screen out, screen in, so that I know with the available time which is the one that I have to. Now, a few words for the planners including Professor Das and the Registrar, Professor Sharma, <clears throat> and all of you senior here. You are dealing with a mix of teachers. Some are very young. You don't worry about them. Because they are, by their own training, it is the influence of the day, they are much more savvy than a person like me. Okay? They know computer, they know computer technology, they know how to use the apps and all that, if they wish to learn something. Okay. Then comes the next category, who are in the middle. That's slightly difficult to handle. Because 50-50, some of them may be to some extent savvy, some of them may appreciate this computer technology, the digitization. Some will say, no, no, my days are going anyway, so so there we have to, the planners have to see it very carefully, how to make it sustainable, how to make it effective, how to make it fruitful. For that you may have to incentivize, you may have to cajole, you may have to pet on their bed, you may give some ladoos, say some increment if possible within our uh, limit of uh, framework, uh, so that you know I become tempted and I learn. Then, once you have made it, it is the job of the planners, including me, to ensure that you are updating your stuff. You might have given a computer with some software, which is my grandfather's age, but I am now on one particular era, so you may have to update it. For that, a faculty does not have to cry, fight, and make 10 applications. It should be automatic. Five years from here, what are the new things required to get it done automatically, reject the older one, there is a mechanism. So this is about the middle fraction, say so starting from 45 to, no, starting from 40 to 48. Then from 49 to 60, 65. Now our retirement age is 65, for a vice chancellor age is 70. By the time new people come to that level, maybe 75 or 80, God knows. Uh, but then <laughs> this is so long, long. You see, not to laugh. I have enjoyed my sensibility up to 70 years. Two terms in Tejpur, like a king. A vice chancellor is like a king. I tell you. The kind of facility a vice chancellor, as a vice chancellor, I got 
Some other sources must be giving more than a key. I can tell you. You have to just oblige the university. But there is a message. Why government is giving so much of facility to you? That question you have to ask. You are expected to deliver. If you are not doing that, you have no right to enjoy these benefits. As a VC, I didn't have any electrical um, bill payment, no gas line, right? Uh, somebody to cook, somebody to lay my table, somebody to make my bed. I, I, I am at least obliged by being a VC. But then the hard question we asked that am I giving my return? And that is going to reflect in Takeichi as we are becoming very famous one day. And that is why the planner, the vice chancellor, the registrar, the senior faculty. Now come back to the senior. There is the notorious lot in terms of digitization. The person like me, even if you kill me, I would rather prefer dying than going to be digitalized with all these apps and this, I get mad. So they are cutting compromise, make things a little easier, like storytelling kind of thing, and whatever is essential, and they should be assisted by some young community. You may ask, I'm now 76, as young, uh, how do I manage? You know, I have very efficient office staff. Unfortunately, yesterday was a holiday, otherwise today I would have come with <coughs> overhead projection and everything. But my office staff, I just give this. I know the sources, however. I do not handle them. Go to their source, you get about it. Digitization, what is the latest? Come, they make it. So for seniors, there is a way out. But it would be good. Some seniors, I have also seen, I can name one uh, who you may be knowing. There are many. Uh, Professor D.P. Agarwal, who is he? Yeah. Former FPSC, uh, UPSC chairman. And he is very much uh, in many of our selection committees. Uh, he is helping us. He is one I have seen, he is almost of my age, but he does everything himself, from typing to going to this app, that app. So there are some old exceptions, of course, but otherwise it's uh, difficult to do with them. But then, Provide them some assistance, they are very good. They may not do by themselves, but they will advise, go there, find it out, go there, find it out. Like say for example, when I was to come, first of all I was not interested because it uh, costs a lot to me, because I have to read, I have to understand. Then I have to try to make you understand whether I am successful or not, that you will tell. Possibly I am not. But then I have to make an attempt. It calls for a lot of work. And we are doing it. That is also very important. So therefore, this is how you do. So the planners have to be very, very calculated, very, very careful, whom to do, do how, whom to do to what level, and whom to be left alone like this. Otherwise, this digital era will not pay us this. So friends, the world is looking. Oh, in between, I forgot to tell you, which I must mention. The AI has become another problem. It is entering everywhere, anywhere, everybody understands or not AI, involved in AI, you and like, my God. And if you go by uh, Stephen Ibarkar, who is a futurist, you know, he make prediction. He was in India just last week or 10 days ago. And he says that India is the place which is very, very resourceful for AI. And maybe it is going to be the best in the world in terms of AI. So that has put another load on us. We have to understand AI, artificial intelligence, how to incorporate, how to uh, use in digitization. So things are going to be complicated, complicated, but obviously solutions are also there. So friends, these are the main things that I wanted to share. I have a few points quickly, a few of you, about the NEP. I'm sure the implementation started as much as anybody else has done from the 20, uh, 2021, 22 batch, yeah, so all of us have started, but be very careful. I have a question or two to just know for you, know, answer. We very fondly speak about any, any, multiple exit, multiple entry. I have a basic question that I have taken exit either from 
KK HSOU or from some other institution duly, but exit is also not very easy. I hope you all remember. Yes. Why it is not easy? It's a portrait it is still uh, And added to that is a very good answer, but is a part. Another thing is a compulsory. I was expecting to skip it. IKS. By two semesters, a credit of IKS have to be, oh, not by two semesters, four semesters, two years. Minimum of eight credit of IKS has to be together. So assume that, that I have done, and I have taken exit either from your university or somewhere else, spend some time in some fruitful work or whatever. I now want to come back to you or from somewhere else. How do you give me it? Which you are now? You are in the third semester of NEP. FY UGP third semester. So I may come for an admission to you. What are you going to look at me, at the papers, and give me? And you have a bath. You have the position. You can give me. Now, what are you going to probe into? So this is a question, practical question I am asking. For effort. It is, it is your problem, it is not my problem. I will get a complaint and I will take action. My job is easy. But that is not what we are looking at. What are the problems you tell me? Anybody, any of the teachers, say, please come forward, don't feel shy. I know as much as you people. Sir, one is the equivalence of the courses that we are having in the third semester. Okay. And uh, what he has done, because the whole... Uh, zero okay, level let us say that 80%, 75% commonality is there. Then what are you going to do? It may not be 100%. So we are speaking you cannot reject. 25% of your capacity you must keep for such kind of entries. So what are you going to do? First part is correct answer. But second part, which is little critical. And my condition is that you cannot reject me. Because you have the seat and you are paid by government. If you required, then the learner has to complete some additional yes. courses. What do you mean by that? I have understood what you say. Yes. But as a candidate, what should I do? Because my third semester started already. Right? You, I think two, three weeks have gone already for a month. So what do I do now? That is a very tricky thing. I would like colleagues you all to have a discussion among yourself and find solution. If you ask me, I would say that if the difference is too big, then we may have to advise not to come here, go to somewhere where the commonality is. But if the commonality is uh, not so big uh, difference, then how do you do it? You arrange for some kind of short capsule courses Make me up to date, and of course you have to make it clear that since you have these lapses, you would better make it up. You have to work harder than others. And <coughs> exit is generally easy, as I said, provided we meet those conditions. The question then comes: faculty selection. It's a very unpopular question I am asking, but it is a practical question. Under today's scenario. Uh, in, in today's scenario, including your digitization, etc., faculty selection, what kind of rigor are you going to put, and faculty promotion, whether CAS or open, from assistant to associate, associate to full professor, what are the rigor that you are going to put in terms of NEP and also in terms of digitization, taken together. That's why I say. Digitalization is a part of NEP 2020. You cannot uh, see or live in isolation. What are the rigors? And how many of our friends would they go for tenure track? Tenure track is known to you people? Yes. What, is, what does it mean? Tenure track is there in some countries already. Many years. It's a fixed tenure uh, for three to five, uh, three maybe. Generally five, okay. Five, yeah. And what happens to me after five years? 
So that depends on the kind of uh, progress that you make and then show skill that you develop and also deliver. And it is going to be a fresh appointment, mind you. It is not a continuation case. No, no Cake one. Are you are, are you ready for that? Will it bring? Will it serve the purpose because you want to bring quality? Otherwise, in Indian system, it is a British system. Though once we are appointed for the lifelong, we relax. But Ghanaji it does this. It cannot because we are really affecting the students. Shall we go for that? Ten-year track. If yes, fine. I'll put it before the decision makers, the governor, things, and chief minister, and all that. Um, if not, that also you have to tell me, so that I can argue on behalf of not. Or we are going to do that because we need standard to do that. I saw popular question, but you know, people like me face. So why not you? Why should I suffer alone? You share. <laughs> I face every day. They, should this promotion be given? There is a crying, you know, case promotion, so everything is happening. I could not get. We feel so bad, you know, because we have also gone through it. We do not like somebody to, somebody else to suffer. We would like to see justice. But then, solution has to be given. So think about this. Then the other point, uh, just uh, refreshing your mind, I want to know this. University of South London, why it is so big today for us? The India campus is coming. Yes, what does it mean to us? It's good, thick, eh? so many universities are coming, like coming from within, one is coming from outside, it should be. Friends, it is a threat to all of us. Please remember. Survival. Some of us may be even lucky. They may give you a fat basket full of money, invite you to the Noida campus of South Africa. For others, for survival, this is going to be a red signal for many of us. So be cautious. Now it has started happening. It's just a question of months they will establish. They may hire some buildings, they are ready, maybe for the next session itself, 25, 26. And by the time they will be ready. But they have money, they have techniques, so they will be able to do that. So internationalization, uh, Professor Das and your colleagues, what is going on in your university, we would like to know. You know, your VC may be asked to present in the VC's conclave. That what have you done for this? But then you have to prepare your VC. VC alone cannot do. All of you have to do. You prepare your VC and internationalization. What does it mean to us? Internationalization is a parameter of, important parameter in uh, any piece. What do we mean by internationalization? And you have a great scope. You have your hostel facility. No, not at all. Some, some facilities should be there. Even for your transit, say people come from villages, want to utilize the headquarters facility. So some hostel facility, please think, please see if possible. But uh, from taker's side, there may be a demand. Coming, people coming from villages, why do you expect them to stay? Let them pay and stay in your guest house. Don't make it too posh, but uh, clean, hygiene, hygiene very well uh, accepted like that. So that they can come, spend time. Otherwise, we are not fulfilling the, the true spirit of open university. So please think about it. If time permits, uh, if you feel like to be bored by my running talks, call me one day, we can discuss mostly LED. Because that is, is a must now, because we are in. So there is no escape. So many ins and outs, and don't go for any learning lecture. Go for interact. You people sit, bring two or three fools, those who are known to be expert, and make them sit, and go on uh, asking questions, and get clarified. Don't ask to give running lecture, that any fool can give. cross query because we want to clarify our doubts, because we are the implementer, right? So we have to understand the integrity. Then only I can implement the program. Thank you very much for your attention. But I am still with you for five, ten minutes, whatever you need. Any query you have on digitization, on NEP also, because that is my obligation, my commitment to the country, to the state.
that wherever I go, I should try to spread the beauty of Eric. Negative side also you can use, no problem. Sir, I uh, uh, would definitely love to <coughs> get you again and again. Uh, so, but uh, two, three uh, information I would like to share with you. Please. Uh, recently, NCBET <coughs> asked to all open universities to part of their awarding and assessing body. So that this open university also uh, part of this skill development mission of India. So we have in active uh, processing our application. We are also developing vocational courses. So this is one aspect uh, <coughs> I would like to convey on behalf yeah. of the university. And yeah. definitely the four credit vocational course we have to give at the time of exit, uh, that particular deficiency definitely will be made up of one species. I will just help you yes. if you just give me one minute. Yes. These so-called vocational uh, training and the experience certificate, you need not have to get only from the industries. Right? If you find that you can send a batch of students to the secretary, another batch to the banks through proper energy, yes, through commercial houses, through small industries uh, like uh, SM industry, you see Dagaroff, etc. etc. So please remember that we are not restricted by limited industrial access, which we are uh, really limited to what you can have. Okay, thank you. And the second aspect regarding <coughs> entry, multiple entry, if some deficiencies are there, then there is a movement is going on across the world, and now in India also it was now popularized, this is micro-credentials. So different uh, micro-credentials on uh, uh, different small small uh, you know capsule kind of learning things now growing up and people also like that. That's uh, what I say yes, that we can give this. Yes. But only danger that uh, those uh, micro credits are not supposed to be uh, just one urgent call at this time. Okay. Um, micro credential. Micro credential. Um, once I said that you know there are different avenues, but uh, the other one is uh, see that these micro credentials or credit from the uh, non curricular courses, non academic courses does not dilute the whole degree. Say I may have a training in the electrician's business. So you may give some credit and I meet the credit requirement. But I am taking admission in philosophy or political science. Whether am I able to help myself with that micro uh, credit or micro credential that you have to do in a very judicial manner. Okay. Then? then, sir, another initiative we are taking uh, <coughs> regarding uh, UGC. You are from education department? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, pursuing two degrees simultaneously. This is one option uh, offered by UGC. So, no, 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 but UGC has given this and also twice a year admission. Yes, sir. But we have to take it with a pinch of salt. Are we in a position to? Tackle this, we will be very happy because what happens, it may or may not be in your institution, I do not know your timetable distribution, but in many institutions, after one or two o'clock, the whole university, whole um, classrooms, complexes, everything is empty. And it's a wastage of money and energy. So we can have to shift. But are our students apt to take? Will they be able to handle? So that part also should be seen. I am not discouraging, but I am putting the pinch of salt. That see that it is not just across the board. Only selected people should go. Try and see how it goes. After one or two successes, you make it a little more open. It is there elsewhere. In IITs, it started a few years ago with mixed lessons. Do you guys have open university? Two cycle of admission is always there. In any, any way. Any way it is there. Yes. So, so therefore that person is taken care of. Yes. 
permission to ICI. What else you said? Yes, sir. so uh, we are offering, sir, our all diploma and certificate courses to all general degree students with 50% concession. 50% concession only what? Fees? Fees. 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 Admission fees. And to make it attractive. Yes. And also we approach to ITI and Polytechnics. Their students also I got to enroll our UG or other diploma certificate programs. So these are the things now going on and definitely uh, we will invite you again. No, 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 I am not the only person. There are so many people. Yes. You think most of the answers are there. But what we want that you should offer, because I should tell you uh, now for a minute from government side. Government's expectation from open university, and this is the only open university for the whole region, mind you. Right? So our expectations are far more than one is coming out. So therefore you will be always under pressure and you should be able to do that. And my request to the Vice Chancellor would be that it is very easy for me to say you should be able to do it. But you need so many supportive things like faculty position, right kind of faculty, other support, maintenance, electricity bill, name it, water bill, hostel accommodation, then faculty accommodation. There are also some politics is going on your university, that the faculty quarters should be here or there, but here there is no space, but Rani people do not want to go. So come out of this, but Rani is not a god forsaken place. If it is to be there, if you people feel it is not so bad, you can go there. One day it will be, it's a very, very good place, I have seen that. The scenic view is very good. Of course, other practical problems may be there, but practical problems will be taken care of. So, but then all these have to be also made up. Government uh, is ready, and GER have already said by next year you should be able to show the GER. For you, it is far more than what it has been. And some uh, lack of reporting last year from your side, the uh, admission number of students was there. There was some problem, but we sorted it out. Sorted out, fine. So, please see that lack of information doesn't create a bad impression. Anything else, friends? Yes, sir. We need a support actually. Uh, being an open university, only from headquarters we cannot access or provide facilities to across the uh, state because it is a you know, diverse state uh, geographically or other many reasons. So, we uh, self financially we introduce some regional center at Bangaigao, North Lokimpur, and Silsar. It is completely self financed, but we don't have land. So that you can ask, what you can do, you please um, approach the Chancellor. Chancellor in turn will give appropriate direction to the local DCs, yes, sir. Deputy Commissioner. Yes, sir. And they have land, uh, but they may have land useful, non-useful. So then a compromise has to be made that they are giving you some land which is useful. That can be helped. So this is a way out. Thank you. But uh, another thing, Professor, I must also remind you, you are not that weak financially. No, Your exchequer is too strong. That's why we are self-financing. Of course. Yes. Of course. We so therefore, for you, yes. position may not be that weak. But it doesn't mean that whole of your exchequer that yes, has been developed over the years is uh, depleted in one go. I'm not meaning that. But come any uh, eventuality, right, any urgency, take from there, maybe take it alone, internal law. And we know you get from government or other sources, philanthropy, CSR is yet another law, we do not have many industries, but whatsoever. So do that, but make it easy. And today I must also uh, express my happiness. I'm quite happy after seeing this from inside. From outside I haven't seen because my crossing is this way from my home to office, <coughs> whether as Bhuvan or Royal. So outside I have seen, I liked it, inside I have also liked more. So my impression is now far changed than what it was. Because I was mentioned that my earlier visits were for wrong reasons. But uh, now I have modified my impression after seeing, seeing this video. You may like to call the governor also. Sir. Minister was speaking. Once they see, I think that will help. Anything else? Any other query? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. 
please. Uh, I can ask from here. Sure, no problem. Sir, sir it's a minimum, it's a combination of all what your professor uh, said here told and what you talked with us and concerning the GER, NEP and the vocational courses and everything. And concerning that, that we have, as we are the people's university, sir, and we are the only people's university that just stands more over here. So uh, we have a big responsibility concerning the GER. And sir, the NEP, uh, there is NEP is a multidisciplinary course, which is very uh, multidisciplinary aspect, which is very close to my heart. I'm from the discipline of SMS, sir. So, well, which discipline? This is the Islamist. Islamist, yes, good. Literature. Sir, uh, say, uh, uh, in the NEP, I have gone through the whole thing. Uh, there are some. Which one? Uh, uh, four, 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 NEP 2020. 464 or 468 or only 60? No, 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 sir. 61 is, uh, I have gone through big doc. I have seen a particular aspect where there is a vocational and the other skill related courses are there. See, in the distance learning, science subject, many of us objected. In fact, I myself was a member of that committee in those days. Because in distance learning, practical oriented courses are not feasible. So <laughs> let us not make fun of that. So that was that is one of the reasons. However, if you can create, say, some laboratory facilities here, say for chemistry, physics, zoology, show it and convince 
then you can open that also. And home science is not a big problem because home science is some practical aspects I know about the syllabus. <coughs> so that arrangement, if you can make home science, can be there. But you have to make a case. And if you make a case, we can take with uh, DEC. You do your, we shall do from our side. Is that what you want? Yes, sir. So that we can, sir, then there is the historical academic studies is there. And the other, other, sir, public and government, other things are also there. So that, so that we can have some association with the other parties also. But that kind of freedom, I think, you yeah. have to the yeah. us. So what she is doing, you can take me. Wherever government's intervention is required, you shall help me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please take initiative. Start it. So then the G G E R and overall contribution of us to the greater society, it will be great. Will be more visible. Yes, yes. More and, and you know, then, then maybe we can uh, we can contribute more than fifty percent to the state G E R, which can be a you know noble uh, example Take for the other states of India. Ma'am, we we would like to support you in this endeavor, but without flouting any norms yes, and so rules and regulation. You know, the, the, you know, we are very uh, influenced and very much thorough brainstorming necessary with experts in the field, which are, I think, our... First of all, you do among yourselves. Yes. Then you bring support experts. Because you know the problems as much as outside experts can be known. But sir, you be always with us, sir. I have been, where can I go? Because you all are my savior. If, if you are not there, my existence is not there. Sir, uh, the problem do not come from the case. That's why you are in other issues. Sir, one serious issue I would uh, like to draw your kind attention. Uh, if possible, you kindly help us. Uh, government of uh, Assam issued a notification that any government employee want to uh, pursue uh, higher education or anything, uh, need permission. As a result of this, this time we are facing a lot of uh, problems. What is the problem? Uh, since there is a restriction, so uh, the, uh, many uh, government employees who is supposed to, uh, we have the last year 8 9,000 teachers enrolled in master's degree, but this time it's very low. You see, there is one catch. <clears throat> if too many people come, yeah. who will run their show? And government is not in a position to give substitute double salary or one and a half time of the salary. This is one problem. So strike a balance. There, how many can you accommodate? And government also should be liberal. I can speak to um, Narayan Kumar. I can speak to Chief Minister and uh, Pegu, uh, Dr. Pegu, if it is required. But Narayan Kumar, Omi, these are the people I can speak first to begin with. And wherever the small problems are there, we can take at that level. But please be careful, because if there is a big exodus from the colleges for the higher degree coming over here, who has to run the show there? As such, uh, in school level particularly, the only 50% of the people attend the schools, teachers. And out of that 50, only 25% of the people teach, and other 25 people come for Gopsa, Pantamul, and Gopal. So this is the actual scenario. This is a government statistic, not our government statistics. It's an external uh, supported government statistics. So out of that, if you take so many students in admission, then that suffers that. So kindly make a compromise. Because please let us say that those children are also our children. We are just lucky lot that our children are in support affluent schools and all that. But other children are also there, children of the parents. So they are the support. So make a compromise, we should support. If there is any uh, relaxation, we can take it forward. But it should be varied. It should not be at the cost of the other school and colleges. It is often a distance learning. It should not hamper their regular duty. Uh, that is what it is. See, why this uh, London open and uh, distance learning became famous and still it's famous? And what is the difference between their functioning and our functioning? So I think we'll be able to judge and see the best we can. And we understand, see, our people are intelligent enough, I can tell you. Only that they have to sit with a kind of a decision that I'm going to do something for the betterment of the system. 
not for my individual benefit. Then I think the solution will come. I believe in it. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you.